Hey guys, it's Merrick again with another uh, game and chat. So, uh, as per usual with the series, I wanted to just say, uh, put some opinions down in the comments section because I always love to hear everybody's opinions and other thoughts on the topic that, you know, I always talk about. So, uh, about a few months ago, back in August, during the summer, I made a video called um, My Dream Fallout Game which was a game and chat essentially so what did i do for that well i talked about what i would think would make a great uh fallout game in my opinion uh what i would want such as a uh you know return to colorado for more fallout tactics related stuff and uh what I was talking about, too, was uh, freeing Bethesda from ZeniMax, which is what kind of happened. Uh, Bethesda now belongs to uh, good old uh, Microsoft, which, depending on your views, it's, you know, it could be there, here or there. So, uh, what am I going to talk about today? Well, uh, this video is more so stuff I missed plus that bit of news, which is kind of old news, but I didn't want to make this video uh, back during, I think I think it was revealed in October, because I just wanted to keep everything a little bit spooky going, so uh, no Fallout. I'm not really a news channel, I'm more of like a thoughts and opinions type of channel on stuff, and or, I, you know, because that's basically it, plus my streams. So, yeah. Uh, what, what did I exactly miss? Well, it's mostly stuff I came up with between now and then, and now that... Uh, Microsoft owns it as well as uh, Obsidian. Uh, my game, the game idea that I came up with, seems a little less like a pipe dream, though a lot of it definitely is like tactics and stuff like that. But that's besides the point, because you never know what you're gonna get with a Fallout game. But you know, keep our we'll keep our thoughts in the ch in the uh, comment section below, and you know, we'll we'll want to get a discussion going and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah. What did I miss for my uh, Fallout idea here? My dream game, so to say. Well, I was thinking a few different features should be implemented that would definitely help the game and make it a little more unique. So, uh, I was talking about like the power armor tier system, how we should have like two tiers. A standard armor, power armor, like what you wear like this in Fallout 4, is what I'm showing with the character. You know, with the helmet and all that stuff included. And we should have, like, Tier 2, which is the Fusion Core-powered power armor. Which would give some of the people, and, you know, like, the factions and everything like that, have their own sort of, like, sets and personalizations and whatnot. So, uh, what I was thinking over was, what if we gave away to salvage power armor, such as turning a, a like, level 2 set into a level one set or not even a level one set like you don't even need training and power armor to use it like essentially making the institute not the institute uh the salvage power armor from the ncr the reason why i was thinking about that was because it would give you a little more incentive give you more bit of an incentive to uh, scavenge out your stuff and you know if you want to go if you want to like spec your character into certain ways Make, such as proficiency in different types of armor, boom, you can make an even lighter power armor class, which isn't even powered, so you don't need to worry about having or losing fusion cores, plus having to worry about the weight limit of a extremely heavy set of light power armor in your inventory. Um, It would give you, plus it would give you more options for armor and stuff like that, and, you know, uh, just looking at the salvage power armor that the NCR has, it's a pretty cool design. It doesn't need, like, I'm thinking maybe you do learn it from the NCR as how you uh, get it. Which would make an idea in incentivizing siding with them an option. Or, hell, like, you know, and then make betrayal even sweeter if you want to betray them and stuff like that. Because, haha, I got your armor secrets. Now you're all mine and stuff like that. Um, I was also thinking talking about stuff like the settlement building and being able to like build up towns as well as your 
sort of tr vehicles and stuff like that because i was saying if they should add like drivable vehicles to the game for the first time since fallout 2 and tactics and you have like a sort of truck and the transport stuff on the back you can have your settlement buildings and shit like that there you know your player homes and turrets and stuff like that what i was thinking with the truck idea was that imagine if you sort of had like a train of trucks like, you probably wouldn't be able to, like, sort of pull that off. But, hey, I was sick. I don't know. This is a little bit of an off-the-cuff thought. Like, you could have, like, 50,000 things. But that, that's definitely a bit of the pipe dream aspect. But otherwise, I do think that the idea of drivable cars in the game would be a great addition. Plus, you know, once again, people go ape shit over that because it'd be pretty fucking cool. Uh, other than that, what I was thinking was... One thing that they definitely need to do for, like, realsies is a full-on quest line related to the paranormal shit in Fallout. We've had a few quests related to as such. So, like, we have the Dark Heart of Black Hole was one. Uh, the Secret of Cabot House, two. And there's that one quest in Fallout 2 where you have to give the... Uh, you have to get back the ghosts... Uh, what was that thing? Her locket and give it to her family. And uh, she was, her soul was able to pass on. But, like, what I mean by that is... With all the revelations that we have in stuff like Fallout 4... Fallout 3... Fallout 76... With, like, you know, the sort of... Uh, interloper... Ugqual Toth and all that stuff. There needs to be, like, a bigger quest related to that. Like, I don't know. Have, how about, for example... You help a paranormal investigator type of character... Because it was mentioned in Fallout 3 when talking about Ugqual Toth in the manual that a lot of those types of people were trying to scrape to a day-to-day -day existence so they weren't in touch. So Colorado's a little bit more of a built-up wasteland despite it being, you know, a mountainous region that is uh, heavily sort of infested with mutants and killer robots and everything like that. So... You can have a guy that lives off in, like, a remote shack that does these sort of studies. If Jack Cabot can do it, and despite him being, you know, a immortal person who's been feeding off the blood serum of his father. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fallout 4, Fallout 4's quests are crazy. And I love that sort of shit. But, um... If you could have a guy that's sort of living off on his own, just he scrapped together a day-to-day -day existence, so it gives him his chance to actually start looking and studying into this sort of stuff like hell uh maybe do a amigara fault style like oh he tells you about a recent earthquake that happened in the region that revealed a cave that was never there before and you go in you find all sorts of spooky shit and then have a little bit more to that like maybe you have to go and investigate like a haunted building from the pre-war because of course it would be haunted from the pre-war and, you know, you discover all sorts of, like, crazy paranormal happenings. I wouldn't say all is something like phasmophobia, but, you know, you get some cool stuff like maybe things moving, doors opening on their own and closing. Though technically that sort of stuff is in phasmophobia, but that's besides the point. Uh, getting cool ideas, like, you know, getting sort of cool ideas and bringing it more to the forefront. One thing that I definitely forgot to bring up, too, uh, before, because this is sort of attached to this. So I'll bring it up here. Aliens. We need to do something with the aliens again. Because I, I really like the idea that... Just because it's in every Fallout game. There's aliens in every Fallout game. And I do like the idea that in 3, we finally sort of see that they were attempting to either invade or do something. But they never really got around to doing that sort of invasion or something. Because, you know, the world blew up. And they're just kind of like there. And they're still kind of like here. I just like that sort of idea. So, bring back aliens for sure. Because I know we got, I think we got in 76, but that's like, you know, 100 years before uh, all the stuff happened. So, yeah. Um, like, back to the more, like, paranormal thing. Uh, have more of the Ugqualtoth stuff. Like, a little bit more of it. Because I'm, I'm always, always, like, at least for me, I'm always, always looking for that sort of thing. Because I really love that, like, I really love that story beat. It's just... It makes the world a little more interesting. It, it it doesn't have to be, like, completely in the front. 
but have it as a side thing, something sort of fun. Because it, I find it a little far fetched to feel that everything with this sort of Ugqual Toth cult and stuff like that is connected. Uh, as per what like some of the theorizing people came up with. But I do like the idea of it being in there and giving some explanation to some of the creatures like the ghouls. But otherwise, yeah, it's just a fun little story beat that I would love to see come back for sure and have a little bit more of solidity and not like wacko nonsense. It was, I, was, I was honestly very disappointed when I found out there was nothing related to that in New Vegas. And uh, someone, I remember having a conversation with someone a long time ago saying that uh oh but why like why would they have that all the way out like west if it was in the east i'm like this is like a fucking like cthulhu cult there's hidden like in that sort of mythos there's hidden shit everywhere hell especially in nevada they even made reference to it in fallout 4 that there's stuff like that in nevada but anyway uh spooky stuff aside uh i would like to see more of that but aside from that uh a friend of mine asked me, because he watched the video, he asked me, like, why would I want to sort of, like, what other factions would I want to sort of see? And I said, like, I think I honestly think that with stuff like the NCR and the three Brotherhood of Steel members, plus, like, any potential uh, tribes of tribals around in the wasteland, I would like to see that... Stuff, something like maybe a new set of Brotherhood Outcasts. Um, I, I've actually been playing the uh, Outcasts and uh, what was the other, what the hell was that mod? And I like the idea of the Brotherhood of Gold, like people disenchanted, like more along the lines of Elder Lions, is sort of like deal, and they're disenchanted with the idea of the Brotherhood because of what they sort of became, the Eastern Brotherhood, I should say. Um. So, like, I would like to see a new sect of the Brotherhood Outcasts, but at the same time, I feel like it, it would be treading, it would be retreading the same ground. And I do feel that, other than retreading the same ground and the sort of faction, uh, as much as I like it, I just feel like there's enough Brotherhood stuff. Like, what I could see is something like the uh, Scribe special encounter that you can get in uh, Fallout 4. At one of the random encounter locations, which grants you a new person for your settlement that'll sell you, like, legendary equipment. And well, then your unique equipment, too. But aside from him, I don't feel like there's much to uh, talk about with that. Like, like I just want to see, like, more... I would just want to see, like, more uh, factions other than, like, you know, Brotherhood stuff, like brotherhood stuff because there's in my thoughts there'd be about like three of them in the sort of like battle of the brotherhoods plus the ncr uh that same friend also asked me uh why wouldn't i want to have a sort of evil faction and i'm like well it's mainly because i find that a little far-fetched because while there would be while there would be a bit of an evil faction, like there's always like ulterior motives and some sort of stuff like that. It kind of bothers me because it's like, why would anyone support Caesar's Legion when they're clearly obviously bad guys? Now the reason why I bring this up is because, well, the problem I have with the Legion is they're clearly evil and they're meant for an evil character. But why would a fucking faction consist of that type of evil, is my question. Like, uh, like here's what I'm talking about when I talked about, like, basically taking over factions in my game idea. You can sway them in any direction you want to go. Like, you can actually be very evil with it, rather than, like, you know, uh, basically just saying, oh yeah, here's the bad guy faction. It's just, it's literally a challenge of ideologies. And this is my problem with the Caesar's Legion ide ideology. It's clearly fucking evil. <laughs> like, enslavement of people. Uh, basically the, well, especially women and like the torturing of like, you know, uh, people who don't join up with the Legion and essentially death for everybody. Uh, it's completely and utterly fucked up. I don't care what the end goal is. You just don't fucking do that shit. 
But uh, other than that, like you could like being able to turn a faction into stuff like that, especially with someone as powerful as like the Midwestern Brotherhood in the region. If you become the elder or like the new leader, though, that's a faction I would say you probably wouldn't want to take over. Or well, in terms of at least in like the main terms and stuff like that. But I, w I would save that thought for another day if I ever talk about this again. Because the Elder, like, knowing that game, knowing tactics and how it ends and, like, with the Elders and stuff like that, how that would play out would be very, very, like, weird. But I have a feeling I, I, I'm, I'm sort of theorizing on what I would, like, do with that, though, in order to make it think. So that's a thought I'll save for later. But um, with the other factions, like, you know, killing Dance and taking over his uh, Eastern Brotherhood or taking over the Circle of Steel with Rance... More like a placeholder name, haha. But you know what I'm saying? You, it's all up to you in what you want to do. You want to take over this faction, you can, and then you could use it for your own purposes and stuff like that. You want to lead an army of tribals, you can, you could do that. And then one other thing that I wanted to talk about too was the robots from the calculator. Like, I was thinking that the Brotherhood would still have a lot of those from their conflict with the Calculator. Because they're pretty powerful robots. They, I know they mostly took over, like, the humanoid... You can mostly take, like, the humanoid combat bots. But, hell, maybe they got, like, a behemoth or two stored somewhere that they use as their form of, uh... Liberty Prime. And I can imagine... I can imagine Liberty Prime being a... Having it getting into a big fight with one of those behemoth bots and probably winning because it's a giant energy death robot versus like you know a giant bullet grenade assault robot, <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I guess you see the Brotherhood still having units like that in their ranks along with the ghouls and super mutants. Plus, you know, you gotta like plus through the story, you'd probably want to get more. Um, and yeah, like you want to get like more people like that on your side, and yeah, so. Other than that, other than the uh, calculator robots, there would be the standard regular Protectrons and like uh, Robo Brains and Mr. Handys and all that stuff. But you know they're they're out in the wasteland. Uh, I would see the brother. I would see like both brotherhoods having like maybe like Protectrons or stu and stuff. Hell, Circle of Steel. They could probably bring in uh, Securitrons from Vegas or even NCR could have had reprogrammed some. But yeah, like the like robot like the robots are gonna be like the same with the addition of the uh, calculator bots from uh, Tactics. The one I would like to see too would be like find a place to put like the uh, Chinese infiltrator camp somewhere or like some sort of like base of operations because they were in the U.S. Have those like red have those like red drones or whatever the hell they're called from seventy six. I really like those little robots so. I'd like to see them come back for a uh, better Fallout game than that. Though I hear that 76 is slowly getting better as it updates. So I gotta, um, I might as well check that out again. But other than that, that's all I really had to think about for what I wanted to do. Had that bit of news that uh, Bethesda's finally free from uh, ZeniMax. So that's good, I guess, and I hope. But, um... And with the with Bethesda working with Obsidian as like more devs, you know what? That's good. We will probably have a great Fallout game because I do think that there needs to be some sort of uh, roundedness to that. Like you have like big people like uh, Obsidian with the RPG stuff, and you have like Bethesda with the creativity stuff, and boom, you know, there's your team, there's your Fallout team or your Elder Scrolls team. You're all set for the future. So yeah. Uh, hope for the future with the Fallout stuff. And I highly, I still think that my game's a pipe dream, but you never know. But anyway, guys, as uh, as I said before, uh, keep your keep your uh, conversation. I would like to see your conversations down in the comment section. Uh, hope to see you guys later. And as of tonight, we're going to be streaming some Skyrim Saturday. Uh, so I will see everybody then. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me tonight. Merrick out. See you guys.